Hi, it's Darnell with Way Long Recipes, and I've had a lot of different types of cookers, but one thing I haven't had in my cooking arsenal until now is a bread maker. And, you know, I know that some folks may not even use a bread maker to make your own bread, but I guess, you know, I don't want to have to go through a lot of the labor with the bread. Like, I like, I want to make um, bread that's kind of like whole wheat cinnamon raisin breads and things like that. And I don't want to have to come back later to add the raisins in and do extra steps and such. I just like to put the ingredients in and set it and let it do its thing come back and have my bread. For the sake of knowing what I put in it myself rather than having to go store bought, it's also more economical and you get a nice hot loaf that uh, is really enjoyable. So got myself a bread maker here and after doing some research I ended up getting this, uh, I think it's pronounced quesential. It's a two pound bread maker. It has uh, automatic loading for like fruits and things that you want to put in there. So it looked like a pretty good option. The price was pretty nice. I got it off of uh, like Amazon for like 70 bucks. I'll put a referral link in the video description. I don't even know if there's any other place that sells this. When I was researching, I, I like this one, but I couldn't even find another place to uh, possibly compete on price for this. And Amazon's price is very good for what it was normally selling for before their current price. So I'm going to do an unboxing here and then Lord willing, make some bread. So I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and unbox this now. Okay, so first out, <coughs> they give you the paperwork, and that's good. You know, you want paperwork to pop up first, so you know how to use the thing. So this is a brief guide to using your bread machine. And it's got different baking tips and such. They also offer a PDF version on their website, which I've already been reviewing. I'm just going to put this down here while I get it out the box, and then I'll set it up there. This doesn't come with any other parts or accessories, it seems. But uh, here's the bread maker. It's got the uh, control panel there for different options. Does all different types of bread. For the first cook of bread, though, I'm just going to do a white bread with uh, regular white bread. And I've got all the flours and such that I'll go over when I start cooking the bread in the bread maker, bread machine. All right, so the power cord is uh, its kind of a little lengthier than, than some other power cords I think I may have gotten for some other cookers, but it's uh, a few feet long. Now inside the box here, there's just some protection. And then there's some parts here inside. Got a couple measuring cups. Got a little uh, measuring spoon and the little agitator that goes down inside of the machine. I'll show you basically how these things work is <clears throat> the little uh, spinner thing goes down in here, goes down inside. Oh, let's see if I can get it. Okay, maybe you can see down. Spinner thing goes down inside of there and kind of spins all the ingredients around and makes your bread. I'm just going to take some tape off the front here. All right, so got all the tape off of it. And it seems like it's just really a more of a solid state unit for the most part. There's an opening that opens, a little hatch that opens right there. And uh, I guess you can stick some things in there through that hole. And one thing I want to show you here inside where you put the bread, well where the bread is baked. Once it's uh, cooked, you can unlock, like it's in lock position now. You can turn it, unlock, and get your bread loaf out. And stick it back in there and get it locked. All right, so that's the Quesential two pound bread machine unboxing. I'm basically gonna get this thing cleaned up and then start working on the actual bread loaf. Okay, so before actually making the bread, I wanted to go over some more review points for this uh, Quesential two pound bread maker it can make bread it can make bread it can make dough it can make jam it can make cakes like pound cakes or chocolate cake in kind of a loaf type form you can delay cooking or making your bread up to 13 hours 
it has a memory like if the power goes out it has a 10 minute memory so if the power goes out comes back on in less than 10 minutes it'll continue cooking which is kind of cool it has a viewing window also um, where I was showing you it has that area you can uh, keep that close show you um, here where you can add your ingredients like your fruits and uh, things like that can add here there's a little viewing window right there so you can view but you're only supposed to view at certain periods not all the time you're supposed to open it only sparingly during the rice phase or you'll lose your warm air so probably not good to open it during the rice phase also during the bake phase you're not supposed to open it at all or your bread can collapse so when it's during the rise or the uh, bake phase you got to be careful and this bread machine has 13 programs to choose from. There's the basic that just makes some basic white bread. That's just kind of like the simplest one. There's a French option for making light breads from uh, light flour. The bread is going to be kind of fluffy. There's the whole wheat program. And that's for breads, you know, with heavy like whole wheat dough. You can make whole wheat breads. There's a sweet option for bread that you know you add your fruits and things like that too and you can add um, fruits it has a option to add a load option to load fruits and things into any of the first eight options I've just gone through four of them so the next four you can use load with also after that you can't but program five is rapid so if you want to cook some bread quicker because you know this takes hours to uh, complete a loaf of bread Program six is multi-grain, so you want to use like your mix to make multi-grain bread. You want to use a mix of flours and such. Program seven is sandwich for your light sandwich breads. I'm going to try and make a sandwich white bread here. I'm not going to do basic. I'm going to try and make a sandwich white bread. See how that turns out in this video here. Program eight is gluten-free if you want to make gluten-free bread. Program 9, and this is where we get into stuff where you can't use the auto loader, is a, a dough option to make dough for like pizza dough and such. I may make some pizza dough and make pizzas, you know, with this making the dough. Program 10 is the cake option to make your cakes. Program 11 is a jam option if you want to make your own jam. Program 12 is a bake that just basically, if you want to give something extra bake time, you can use the extra, uh, the bake option to give extra bake time. And then the 13th program is called Homemade. And that's where you basically, you know, if you're good enough with this thing, you want to customize all the settings yourself, use the Homemade option. And we're going to get into actually making the bread now. And I wanted to mention this as I get into the ingredients of the bread and such. You know, usually when I'm making uh, different things and air fryers and oven type cookers, I may um, not use the liquid measures for liquids or the dry measures for dries I may use them interchangeably for some of those things and with those types of uh, cooks you know as long as you get the measurements roughly the same it's okay when you're doing bread with bread machines and such you have to be very precise so this is where you get into where where you really want to use your dry cups for your dry cup measures and your liquid cups for your liquid cup measures um, so I will be using the correct types of measuring cups in these bread maker cooks although in some other ones where you know it can just be roughly right I may just use them interchangeably or something if I don't really care if it's off by a bit but here we're gonna go precise all right the a white sandwich bread recipe I'm using is direct from the quessential.com website it's their recipe for uh, basic white sandwich bread and I just wanted to show you the flour I'm gonna use since I may not have room when I show you all the other ingredients and get them all laid out. But I'm going to be using this uh, King Author Unbleached Bread Flour. Because it's a uh, pretty good flour. It comes from 100% U.S. hard red wheat grown on American farms. And uh, it's got a 12.7% protein content. So um, I think it will turn out pretty good. And so I'm going to get all the ingredients set out now. All right, so the ingredients that I have here are, I've got two teaspoons of kosher salt. You're not supposed to use iodized salt if you use table salt, but I'm using kosher salt. I've got one tablespoon of sugar, three teaspoons of dry active yeast. I've got four tablespoons of melted butter, one and a third cup of warm water. It's supposed to be like 80 degrees. 
And so I just use some, you know, warm water. And I've got four cups of the bread flour I mentioned. You're supposed to spray the uh, kneading rod with some cooking spray before you put it on so it's easier to remove later. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, just uh, I'll just do that over here. You can't really see it, but I don't want to spray into any of my ingredients by accident. Especially with that dry active yeast. You don't want to get anything in that dry active yeast and mess it up. So I've got the rod, the kneading rod down in there good. Alright, now I'm going to add, you're supposed to add your wet ingredients first, so I'm going to add in my water. My warm water is in there. I'm going to add in my butter, and it's unsalted butter. Do not use salted butter according to this recipe. Now I'm going to put in my salt. Sprinkle that around. Add in my sugar, one tablespoon of sugar. Now we put in the flour on top of all that. The yeast goes in last. You don't want the yeast getting mixed up with anything else. If the yeast gets mixed up with anything else, it will start to process too soon. So what you do is you put all the flour in, and after you got all your flour in, you just take, I'm just going to take a knife and just make uh, a little well sort of make a little hole in the flour and in this little hole this little well that I'm just kind of little trench I'm kind of digging out in the middle of the flour I'm going to just pour in my dry active yeast so I've got my yeast in the well now I'm just going to take this now I could have already put it in here and had it locked in but I wanted to show you so I'm going to put it inside of here now and I showed you earlier how you lock it in alright got it locked in place going to close up alright so they show all the program numbers at top so that you can keep track when you're actually using the bread machine so at this point, you know, it just started at that 238 when I uh, plugged it in. It just had that already on there. But I want to hit the menu button until I get to program 7, which is sandwich. Sandwich is 7. So I'm going to hit the menu button to get to program 7. And I guess that runs for 3 hours, 5 minutes is probably its run time. But now I want to click on the uh, color button because I want to have a light bread so there's a little indicator down here you may not be able to see when I clicked it it went from medium to dark and I click it again and it went over to light down here so light medium dark and I can choose a loaf side if I click the loaf loaf size if I click the loaf button it goes to auto dispense um, 1.5 pound 2 pound that auto dispense I can you know maybe dump some raisins or something in but everything's set. It's set for sandwich. It's got its automatic time, three hours, five minutes. It's a two pound loaf, and I put in ingredients for a two pound loaf, so I'm just gonna hit start, and it's gonna start working. Now, what I'm gonna do now is a key step from what I've learned about these bread makers. You wanna push this thing back away from your counter, because it can, as it's moving and rattling, it might go off your counter and then you're done. So uh, I'm going to push it back after I turn the camera off so that you know it's back far enough so it won't fall off the counter or anything but I'll bring you back probably when this is done and uh, then we can take it out, plate it, taste test it and such. You're supposed to uh, give it like maybe 30 minutes to cool before you start cutting and such. So It has an auto warm feature. It's going to start auto warming once it uh, turns off so I'll have to Come get it, take it out, then let it set for maybe 30 minutes to cool, then cut it. But bring it back in a bit. Okay, so the bread machine is all done now. Basically, it took that full three hours, four minutes. That's basically the total cooking time that shows when it starts. As it goes through cooking, it goes through each of these steps. It goes through knead one, rise one, knead two, rise two, rise three, bake and keep. And it has a little indicator that shows as it goes through each of those. 
when it gets to the end does some loud beeping to basically let you know it's all done and basically during the cook it was loud during the first seven minutes that like a small mechanical tool like you heard when I uh, just left earlier and it did that for like seven minutes as I said then it stopped and then after about uh, when it was down like two, two hours 27 minutes left but I got down to 2 hours 27 minutes left, it did a need to started making that noise again for a little while maybe about 7 more minutes, then it went down to the 2 hour 12 minute mark and it started doing it again and it like uh, did some beeping to do the uh, fruit alert to let you know to put fruit in if you gotta put fruit in then it went down to the hour 38 minute mark and it did it for maybe two minutes during the rise three other than that it was silent I mean other than those times it was silent so about 20 minutes total it makes noise at different intervals here and there and otherwise it's silent um, basically all the noise is really done during the first half of the cook and then after that you don't hear anything but um, during the last hour the start of the last hour I smelled it during the cooking of the uh, bread and it smelled like for a little while it smelled like burnt bread while it was cooking and then in the last 30 minutes of the cook in the last 30 minutes of the cooking of the bread I mean it smelled good I mean I'm hungry right now I mean it smells so good the last 30 minutes of the cook so I'm gonna get it out now you're supposed to let it set 30 minutes to cool I don't even want to but I'm gonna have to to you know try and get this thing right so I'm gonna take it out now all right, I've got some uh, heat resistant gloves on because it's going to be hot in there. And I'm going to just turn it for my convenience to more easily get it, get the bread out. Don't want to hit my counter or anything. I mean, hit my uh, cabinet or anything. So there's the top of the bread. I'm going to go ahead and try and unlock and get it out. Now I'm going to spill it out on the cutting board here. It's like it's, it's not stuck, but I think the kneading rod is kind of holding it. All right, there we go. Now remember, I, um, I ordered mine up light. I put it for a light loaf of dough, a light, a light loaf of bread, so it is light as I requested. Now it's supposed to wait 30 minutes to actually cut it, but you can see there... I'll just kind of give it the profile spin. That's the back where the little uh, kneading rod was in there poking around. So this is a two pound loaf and uh, I guess it's not very long large. It's kind of like the slices are very tall large, you know. So when you're using like a bread maker, you know, you don't want to um, use a bread maker and be trying to put your bread into a regular toaster if you want toast later on you need like a toaster oven you know like the new way bravo exo smart oven that i have or any other type of toaster oven because bread makers you know some of them make large slices of bread and so depending on the uh the one that you have and the bread that you make you might need something other than a conventional toaster so this one as large as these uh, slices of bread are i know they're probably not going to fit in my regular toaster but I have a toaster oven so that's not a problem I'm gonna let this continue to cool and then I'll bring you back just one quick thing while the bread is still cooling just a real quick overview of cleanup because it's real quick and easy and simple after you get the um, the basket out that the bread was in you have to just basically put water in here with a little mild uh, dishwashing fluid put some water in there because if you don't that's gonna kinda like fuse in there that dough will fuse and it'll be hard to get that out. So I'm gonna put water and some uh, a light dishwashing detergent in there in a moment. But over here, all you do is you just basically wipe any debris off the inside and such. Gonna wait for that to cool and then I'll just you know wipe down the inside there, wipe that down there. That's it for cleaning. So it's quick and easy cleaning, but still cool in here. I'll bring you on back. Okay, so the bread's had time to cool. Really, it only needs 15 to 30 minutes, so it's been long enough. 
I just wanted to show, now this is a whole pack of Arnold uh, bread. I don't know if you're familiar with Arnold bread, but it's a little shorter than a traditional loaf of bread and uh, a little taller too. Now I've only taken maybe two, two slices out of here, but it's a pretty much complete loaf. You can see lengthwise it's a little, or I'll put it up here, lengthwise it's a little longer than this loaf, but height-wise it's shorter. It, it's definitely shorter as far as the height and the circumference around. This bread's a lot wider around. So, and this is a two pound loaf. This is just 1.8 pounds, one pound, eight ounces. So, like one of these slices, you probably could slice it and then cut it in half to make, uh, you know, two slices of bread, basically. So, I'm basically gonna go ahead and do a cut, and get this one out of the way, and do a cut of this bread here now. Let's see. I mean, it's almost longer than my bread knife. That's how long this, this bread is. So have a look inside of there. Looks pretty good to me. All right, now I'm gonna just cut a slice. I mean, these are huge slices here. I'm gonna do, do it from this way because I'm left-handed, it'll be easier for me to cut like this. I'm cutting a huge slice too. I mean, this is like a brontosaurus slice of bread here. But I'm going to taste it straight up. I'm not going to put, I mean, you know, you can put bread or whatever on your, I mean, sorry, you can put butter or whatever on your bread, not bread on your bed bread but butter or whatever on your bread but look how huge this is compared to the plate you know you don't want to cut this thing lengthwise to probably make your sandwiches or something or you probably just put your meat in and just fold it over or something but let me get the camera swapped around and do a taste test of this bread because I've been waiting for a while all right here's our uh, Fred Flintstone slice of bread <laughs> wow this is huge Well, it tastes like white bread. <laughs> it tastes just like white bread. I mean, it's, you know, like white bread. I guess if I put more sugar or something else into it, I could make it taste however I want. That's the beauty of uh, having a bread maker. So I also wanted to mention regarding the uh, bread from the bread machine. After I did the initial video and taste test and such, I had some on a sandwich and I was like, this is incredible. I mean, after I had it on a sandwich and I started having more of it, it's great. I mean, it's like the best bread ever. <laughs> I mean, really. I really like it. The kids like it. It's great stuff. So, I mean, I don't even go to the store anymore to buy bread. I've just been making bread here at home ever since. So, it's great stuff. So, um, enjoy this bread maker if you get one. I can, you know, put whatever I want in it. It's got the uh, fruit dispenser if I want to put fruit in it. You can put nuts in it, but you don't want to put any nuts in it. it may scratch the interior of the uh, bread holder there, you know. It's a non-stick surface, but it can scratch, so you don't want to put any nuts in there. It can scratch and have to chop them up real good. So, basically, you know, you can make the bread maker what you want. You know, you can make of it what you want of it. You know, you can make any type of bread you prefer or like. And so, you know, this is something I've been wanting to try and something to, you know, get into because when you do your own bread, you know what's in there. And, uh, you know, over time, it can be an economical option. So, um, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. If you like to see more bread maker videos, leave a thumbs up. If you don't want to see more bread maker videos, go ahead and leave a thumbs down on this one. You know, let me know what you think, you know, through that response and also leave your comments. You can share this video with a friend. Subscribe to the channel. I've got recipes for other cookers at SuperwaveOvenRecipes.com. If I come up with any originals for this, I'll put those there as well. But uh, 
Also, I'm on Twitter at Wave Oven Recipes. And so, uh, definitely looking forward to hearing from you about this and good eating.